What is up, guys? We are live in today's video. I'm going to give you the ultimate guide on how to become rich in wholesaling real estate. And I'm just not talking about, oh, you know, how to make a bunch of money in wholesaling and do that. Guys, in this video, I'm talking about true wealth and how to actually build true wealth in wholesaling real estate. For every single wholesaler out here, when you know how to create the true life of your dreams with wholesaling real estate, this is the complete guide. I'm really excited about this because I think a lot of people talk about, you know, how to make the money in wholesaling, but they don't want to tell you what to do after, you know, how do you scale? What do you invest in? Stuff like that. Obviously I'm not a financial, this is not a financial advice channel. This is a wholesaling real estate channel, but I really want to give my thoughts on opinions on just the topic of how to become rich in wholesaling and how I became rich um, and really share exactly how you can do the same thing. Um, this is going to be truly about how to build the business up and what to do when you build it up. Because I think we got a lot of people coming in here getting their first deal, maybe their 50th deal uh, watching me. And uh, they really want to know how to create true wealth in this business. And I'm really excited to do that. Uh, I'm really excited to share exactly how to build the life of your dreams with wholesaling real estate. And I truly believe a lot of people, I need to hear what's up on this one. So I'm excited, guys. I'm pumped up. Uh, let's get it going. We got first the party. What's up, guys? How's it going? Tim says anyone get their first deal because of this guy. I think a lot of people did, and it's really exciting. So, guys, if you want to learn exactly how to change your life with the power of wholesaling real estate, I'm excited. If you're ready to go, if you're ready to learn how to change your life in wholesaling, let's get it going. I only know one person to get everyone jacked up today to go learn wholesaling real estate and to build the life of the dreams. If you're ready, let's get it. Woo! Woo! Fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Get up, get up, and get the guy. Go. Time to wake up. Time to wake up, bitch. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Guys, I'm excited, guys. How do you not get jacked up when you see that? Like, how does that not just get you excited to go out the day, excited to live another day, and excited to go out here and change your life in wholesaling? I'm pumped up. I appreciate everyone in the chat. I see everyone on here uh, just providing the value today. I'm excited. We got a lot of great questions, a lot of great stuff. It's a lot I want to get into today. And uh, truly, I, I want to be the person to show you how to build wealth the right way. I think a lot of people talk about it the wrong way. A lot of people have shiny object syndrome that they, they want to share exactly, you know, buy my uh, course here or, you know, buy my little store here and you can build wealth. I'm really excited for this because I, I truthfully believe that I, I am wanting me and Rick to be your mentor for life in general. And no, this is not like a life thing, but like a mentor for the entire wholesaling real estate process. And when I talk about like teaching people wholesaling real estate, not just make your first 100K. Now, everyone knows in wholesaling real estate, um, I'm getting told the screen's black apparently, so I'll go check here. But why I'm talking is everyone knows in wholesaling real estate, the honest truth is I can help you make 100K pretty easy. That's freewholesaling.com. Everyone's part of, free, everyone's part of uh, free wholesaling. Everyone knows how to do it the right way. But what I, what I can tell you right now is, see, Angel's throwing me off here. He said the screen's black. Just to make sure everyone can see this, but I think we're fine. So what I tell you is every, every this is a live video, by the way, but most of the people that watch me, I'm here to help them make the first 100K. And that's great. And then slowly I've been building systems up for you guys for absolutely for free, obviously. I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything. How to go from 100K to a million. And that's really in mailing mastery. That's basically the entire process. And Really, I teach more about how to scale, freewholesaling.com, a scaling, answer a lot of scaling questions because I run a seven-figure operation right now. And that's kind of where we're at now. Now, at the end of the day, I, I've seen this has been an, an insane. Um, this is really bad, but I've seen a lot of seven-figure wholesalers who are broke. 
And what I mean by this, they're running seven figure operations, but they're spending the money on a cool whip, a sick watch, uh, you, you know, some drip and uh, just go flex on everyone and make people feel like they're better than everyone else. And um, at the end of the day, that's not true wealth. And I want to teach that part of the business too today. But really what I'm going to focus on today is how to scale up because to get rich in wholesaling real estate, you really need two things. And, and this is really what I've seen. And this is the most important part. So to get rich in wholesaling, it, it, it's honestly, so how do you get rich in wholesaling? It's a combination of two things. And so I, I think I really want to explain the first part here. So in wholesaling, what is rich, right? Because I know some, I, I know, but like, I'll give you an example. I've been to uh, one country I've been to where this is really like a big lesson I learned was in uh, Kingston, Jamaica. And you can see from just talking to the people there that in Kingston, like there's people that make, I don't know, five grand a year. And they are some of the happiest people in the entire world. They are truly rich. Like their hearts are full. They're full of happiness. They work, but like they love life and they're probably one of the richest people in the world when it comes to spiritually, emotionally. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, like that's a different definition of rich. I'm talking about money wise, obviously we're in the United States of America, but I mean, everyone knows cream cash rules, everything around me, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. But uh, what I can tell you is rich is really a mindset. But I really want to share the way that I have a definition of rich. And in my opinion, being rich, it all comes down to freedom. And that's the way I describe it. So this isn't a video about how to delegate everything. And that's the entire video. I'm talking about money-wise too. I'm going to show you how to get the freedom and the money with wholesaling real estate because that's really important. That's that's the main focus. The, the main focus of this video, and I think hopefully you guys are seeing this, but the main focus is not to how to make a certain amount of money and that's it. That's for a different video, obviously. This is a video more of how to create freedom and never have to worry about working a job money ever again. And I truly believe this is gonna be a really good guide for everyone. And no one really talks about it. It's hard to sell a course on something like this. A lot of people do, they have seminars and stuff, but I, I wanna share it the right way and the way I truly believe. So in my opinion, to be quote unquote rich. So Rich, in my opinion, like I could tell you, if you're making around a hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income, I, I I truly believe in the United States are rich because you don't have to work a job ever. You could literally sit on your butt all day, do nothing. Obviously, most people that have a hundred k plus a year in passive income, like me, I can't sit around. I go I go stir crazy in my head. Like I'm 22. Like I, okay, hey, am I just gonna make all this money at 22 and just be like, okay? Uh, I'm going to be just buy a house and be just chill out doing nothing all day. I'd go crazy. Like I, I would probably get really into video games. I'd get, read a bunch of stuff. Like I, I, in my heart, I'm here to impact lives. And uh, I truly believe what I'm doing is doing that. So it, it's crazy. But in my opinion, hundred K a year in passive income is rich. Um, that's kind of what I really want to talk about today and, and really help you guys out. But to make a hundred K a year in passive income, this isn't like doing two real estate wholesaling deals. Okay. So the two most important things to get rich in wholesaling, to have the time of your life, the freedom, your money back, this really comes back to scaling your wholesaling business and then investing that in the right way. There's lots of ways you can invest the money. Obviously, I'm not a financial advice person. I'm no Grand Stefan. I'm no Meet Kevin. Um, I'm none of those things. Even though it's kind of funny that the top, arguably the top, one of the top five real estate YouTube channels, meet Kevin and Graham Stefan. They um they churned into finance people, which I think is kind of funny. But I'm just every, everyone's saying, is this a finance? I I'm a real estate wholesaler. Like that's what I do. Um, but what I can tell you is, let's go over how to scale the business the right way and actually how to invest that the right way. I, I don't think a lot of people talk about this the right way, and uh, I'm pretty excited for it. So number not number one here, like like to scale a real estate wholesaling operation. It, my honest opinion, there's five key points of scaling. So if you want to scale your wholesaling real estate business to the top level you possibly can in this world, if you want to scale it to a million dollars a year plus eight figures, nine figures, nine, uh, ten, eight figures, eight figures, nine, nine, I don't think really many nine figure operations, maybe, uh, maybe like an open door or Zillow or something like that. But 
Zillow's not really there. What, what I can tell you is to scale a real estate wholesaling operation, there's five key points. And guys, uh, the five key points before I give it, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. I wait until this point to say it because I'm out. I got you on the hook here. I'm literally about to give you the five key points of how to scale your wholesaling business. Now smash that like button and subscribe, please make sure everyone watching this for the next five seconds. I'm going to tell you to smash that like button, subscribe. And then once you do that, we'll, we'll break it down because this is, this is part of my 5,000. Like if you go to a $5,000 mastermind, this is what I'm literally going to say. You'll pay five grand to get this information. So the least you can do, please is just like that, like this video. Now you did. Let's break it down. Welcome to my $5,000 mastermind house scale. So number one here of the five points of scaling an operation, number one's lists. Having an insane focus on your list is going to be the first key point of scaling to a million dollar year business. This is what I've done. And this is probably one of the most important parts there. This is a, basically a funnel and a, a, it's more of a conveyor belt. If you think about it, I mean, assembly line, like how they made the model T right. Part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. There's five parts in this. Number one is the list government lists, pro, like including probates, code violations, water shutoffs, high equity. I'm, I'm telling you for running a seven figure operation. I'm telling you right now, you need to ha have your head in the game on this stuff because this is stuff you don't play with. List REI.com list, batch lead lists, uh, lists you have to buy on top of the government list, trying for dollars. It's going to be really important to get it going like this. Number two here, marketing channel. Focusing in and honing down the right marketing channels on, for a seven-figure operation is going to be important. You will tell that most seven-figure operations, they do all the marketing, but they really hone down and get really focused on like two of them. That's what I've seen in most seven figure operations. For us, it's mostly direct mail, I would say. That is like the majority of it. And then secondary is like cold calling and SMS. I put them together, but mostly cold calling. And that's just what works in my market. Am I not working your market? That's why you got to focus on what's going to work in your market there. The marketing channel you have to focus really hard on because that is going to be one of the biggest keys of scaling it up. Uh, next here's acquisitions. Uh, I, this is pretty obvious, but you got to get your acquisitions right. If you want to run a seven-figure operation, your margins are going to have to increase. And that comes with boots on the ground in front of somebody and going out here and closing deals. You're going to have to find the right acquisitions people. And that's going to be really important. You're going to need acquisitions to actually get this done. Lastly is Dispo uh, for the top four here. And you got to sell for the most money. You got to get the best cash buyers. You need an operation in place to actually pull these cash buyers network and get the best ones possible. And the last part, and the one that no one really likes talking about, especially when it comes to scaling up your business. I, I'm telling you right now, I, this is unbelievable that not a lot of people really focus on this the right way, but it's delegation. Like delegation is going to be probably the least important in my opinion. I think if you get one, two, three, four down a solo, you could probably make 500 K a year, but that delegation is an, it's going to cost money. You'll see an economies of scale with it. There is diminishing returns for it. Obviously, you got too many employees. Uh, but if you can delegate the right way, you can easily scale it up to a million dollars a year with a system. Create a system of your own. I mean, you got frameworks you can use from me. The book Traction is amazing on this. But really having people doing all these tasks for you. So let's kind of break it down. So again, we got lists, marketing channel, acquisitions, disposition, and then delegation. For delegation, we're going to be focusing on one through four. Like that's where a lot of the delegation is going to be. For example, number one lists, we're going to have VAs be pulling these government lists for us, the water shutoffs, the probates, fire damage properties. They're going to be calling these people every single month that they have to, researching markets if you want, prop stream, all this stuff. I can tell you right now, you're going to need a VA for pulling a lot of the harder lists. I know in person, I mean, we can still pull the list yourself on like prop stream if you want, but like that's going to be really important. Number two, marketing channel. So, Focus really, I think for most people, we we're in a crazy market where average deals 50, 60 K and direct mail works for us. Sometimes it might not work for you. Uh, there's some markets. So like city is really good for direct mail. Uh, Virginia is really good for direct mail. There's certain pockets that you can get really well in a seven figure operation where direct mail works really well. What, what I could tell you is for most people though, I, I'm telling you sticking to SMS and cold calling is probably going to be the best bet. Obviously, if you can add this in, this is going to be kind of the, the little juice that's going to ramp up the operations. You could probably double your business if you can do this the right way. I've been talking about this for, for a while now. 
And this is having people drawing for dollars for you, hiring a kid 10, 12 bucks an hour to listen to music and drive for dollars for you. Another big part is going to your local RIA and finding new wholesalers that are too scared to go talk to sellers. You could probably have an army of five to 10 people drawing for dollars in your market five days a week for you for four hours each and just split those deals. Those are free marketing channels you're going to get. And these are, uh, again, I love a lot of people who have scarcity mindsets. It's like these people are getting you deals that you have never gotten in any of your lists. That's just extra income. And that's what I'm saying. You probably double your income doing this, get 10 people doing this and you can show that you close a lot of deals. You're going to do really well. Uh, I'm telling you right now, this is the most important part. Um, if you cannot get the marketing channel right or the lists, you're screwed. I'm telling you, like marketing is going to be the most important part of the business today. Getting your first deal, getting your hundredth deal. If your marketing is not right, you're not going to get these deals done. You can be mediocre in acquisitions and still get great deals if your marketing's good. I'm telling you, if you have bad marketing and you're an elite acquisitions person, you're going to make less money. Nine times out of 10, that's the reason why most people aren't doing well. They're not pumping up the marketing the right way. And obviously a lot of people, they're struggling to scale. It's really the marketing is the problem, the acquisitions. Next, obviously to delegate it, you get an acquisitions manager. That's going to be your local partner here. I, I can promise you right now, this acquisitions manager is going to be probably the hardest hire, but it really needs to be the last hire too. It's the hardest and last hire to do. Obviously your first hire should be a VA, but you keep going more and more into it, do some marketing there. Uh, but really this acquisitions person should be local. You'll do a lot of really good results doing it. I kind of go in when you have an acquisition acquisitions manager. I, I this is the best way to do it. I go in the appointments with the person, and I have a three 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 rule, basically nine. I go in three appointments with them where I close the deal in front of the seller while they're shadowing me, and then I have three appointments where they talk a little, and then I talk a little, and we kind of do the tag team approach for three close three deals. And then the last three is I shadow and I don't say a word and see, watch them close uh, three in front of me. That's the three, three, three approach. It works really well. And that's how I train the acquisitions managers. Once they can close three deals that are really well, it works really well. And each profit has to be at least 20K. Next here is Dispo. I really recommend hiring like a local realtor. That's where I've seen you've had the best success with dispositions people. Obviously, you can pop it up more, but uh, th that's really what I've seen. At the end of the day, guys, like these are sort of a system to get to seven figures. Obviously, you want to know how to execute it the right way. Freewholesaling.com is there. Like it's all there. So if you want to scale it up, that's how you can do it. But remember, that's like one part of the equation. Like making seven figures a year. I know a lot of people, they'll spend 40K on a mastermind. They'll, 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 they'll do stupid stuff. What I can tell you right now in wholesaling and real estate specifically, if you scale it up, you have a duty, honestly, to use that money for good. Um, the biggest thing before we talk about like how to invest that money, what to do with the money, obviously, is how do you reinvest it in the business? And that's something that's kind of a sticky situation because obviously you should be reinvesting the business, but if you're reinvesting it in the wrong way, you're just wasting money. And I, I don't want to feel like a cheap person or anything, but it's like, Oh, I'm going to reinvest by going to a $50,000 a year mastermind and join the family of wholesalers uh, mastermind. It's like, or collective smart people met like masterminds of just like collectives. It's like, right, what, what are you talking? Like the people in this room are not as good as you think. I'm, I'm just being bluntly honest. Like if, if I truly believe, cause I've been in these rooms where they were that good and they didn't turn out to be frauds. A lot of these people I'd be there. That's not the case. We got the internet now. I got, I got probably 57 figure wholesalers in my contacts right now that call me on a regular basis. I'm telling you right now, seven figure wholesalers. I don't take every call, but uh, they're my phone texting way more in messenger. I'm telling like who needs to go to the mastermind when truthfully the phone is the new mastermind. I, I'm telling you right now, the internet, uh, just the way you can do things right now. It's the way of the future. And um, that's why you don't see me flying around all over the country. Like I, I do my own thing. You know, I run my whole operation. I, I, it, that's the thing. And uh, the truth is I'm trying to unveil the curtains of these masterminds of reinvesting the business to you guys absolutely for free. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I focus on. 
So uh, the next part here is how to invest it. So reinvesting it, put it into the lists and the marketing. But remember, there's a diminishing amount of returns, especially with your skill level. So I get asked this question a lot. You know, Zach, I got my first deal in wholesaling real estate. What do I do with that? I just got $10,000, okay? Do I invest $10,000 in an SMS system with skip tracing and stuff? I always say, I always say, I always ask this, you know, you got your first deal. How did you get that first deal? It's like, oh, I did it through cold calling a code violation list. I, I did it through trying for dollars. Whatever you get that first, second, third deal, you need to double down on that. Because if you tried five marketing channels, only two did, did well, go harder on that. Go hard till you can kind of scale that up a little and then reinvest it. Obviously, you do the free, uh, you do the free, free methods and then you can start paying for it. I think the first one should be cold calling yourself and just pay for skip tracing, maybe like a zackdialer.com, a triple line dialer like that, 10 line dialer, whatever you want. And then maybe get an SMS. I wouldn't flirt with the really expensive stuff. SEO, PPC, Facebook ads, direct mail. I'll leave that for a little longer until you kind of scale it up a little more. And then honestly, all you really got to do is just scale up direct mail um, when you kind of get bigger and it gets kind of easy. Um, now, scaling up cold calling or any VAs and then you kind of get in that method. Obviously, I'm here to help you on like how to do the entire thing. Uh, but that's really what I've seen like on reinvesting. I think you got to go really slow. I, I'm just telling you, you, may, you get 10 grand, putting 10 grand into an SMS list for one month is not going to do well. Do something you can easily repeat. And I, I promise you, you'll do very well with it. I, I cannot stress this enough, guys. This business is a numbers game. This business, especially when you're scaling up, a lot of people work harder, not smarter. I, I'm telling you, for example, if you can just, let, let's say you're making 500K a year now and your goal is a million, and you think you have to go double the amount of deals you do, that's honestly a lie. The honest truth is if you can figure out a way, if you can just hone down on the acquisitions, you don't have to pump up the marketing even more. If you get really good at rapport, going in person, spending extra time with your sellers, doing above and beyond calling, asking about their family, about their hobbies, you can easily double your wholesale fee. And that gets you to a million dollars. A lot of people have that issue right now. I run a seven figure operation. Even if I divided that by half, I'm still a seven figure operation. So I, it's not a good analogy. Let's say I made a million dollars per year. If I didn't do the rapport that our business does, or we didn't spend so much time on the rapport piece and actually connecting with a seller. If I made a million dollars, I would probably be making 200K, 250K a year. That's how important rapport is for my business. The average wholesale in my market is making 10, 15K a deal. I'm, rough, I'm, I'm roughly 40, 50, 60, and we got a bunch of $100,000 deals on the pipeline. So the way that we did this is through rapport and through actually helping people out empathy and caring about a seller. I'm telling you and going and just having speed and empathy. Those are the two words I can tell you right now. If you can just get that through your mind, if you want to scale a business up or you're struggling in a business growing, implement speed and empathy in this business. And I promise you, it, you will see insane returns. I, I'm just going to say this right now. I know a lot of people watching this are struggling, not uh, they're struggling. If you implement speed and rapport, you will do amazing. So this kind of goes back to the next part, you know, getting rich. Right now we got a seven figure operation going. What do we do with this? Obviously, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm 22. I'm, I, I I was broke five years ago, so I don't have 40 years of investment knowledge. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm none of this stuff. I'm just telling you what I know. And yes, for everyone asking, this is my pitch for my Amazon store that I will be selling for fifty thousand dollars each for you guys to get a two percent return. This is where I start pitching it. So get your wallets ready, guys. Um, so guys, I, I, I was broke five years ago. So uh, what I could tell you is just keep that in mind. I'm 22. So a lot of people just go, Oh, I don't care what you have to, I'm just gonna say what I use. Like, honestly, take it as you will. Maybe it's stupid advice. Maybe it's great advice. I don't care. This is the part in the video where it's like, I am not the complete expert and I'll be completely transparent with it. I'm just gonna tell you what I use. A lot of people tell me, they sell a lot of funny stuff, you know. I'll, 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 one example is I, I know someone says, I don't know a thing about private money. I promise you, for a lot of these people, I have more private money out right now uh, than those people. So I might not be a fan of it, but I you sometimes have more. Um, so let's explain it. Let, let's kind of break down 
the point of getting rich, what to do. So one of the best quotes I've heard about being rich, and this is really my personal philosophy on it, and this is where I've seen most of this, is the goal here is to be rich, not to look rich. I, I promise you right now, a lot of people, they can actually become rich, get that 100K a year in passive income if they cut out a lot of the problems that they have. One really big example. Now, I, I, th there's two really good quotes I love. Um, I'm going to write it up here too, just so I don't... Um, two schools of thoughts that I'm going to tell you. Let me just write this one down. All right. Just want to make sure I got that out there. So number one, I can tell you, this is where most people's problems are. There's two schools of thought. I kind of go on both of them and you got to take the best of each one. And cause there's two schools. And so I'll tell you school one, the goal is to be rich, not look rich. If you want to make hundred K a year, pretty simple. If you make the seven figure operation first and I'll go through the entire rules with it. But I, my personal philosophy is, I mean, you can buy the Lamborghini, you can buy the BMW, at the end of the day, it, it, it won't give you what you truly want. You got you to gotta have that why, and you got to figure out why you're doing this. My why, obviously, is to change my life, change my family's life. Obviously, you know, I can go spoil my mom, take her out on nice dinners, um, buy her a bunch of great stuff. You, you know, like, that's all, like, I love that. You know, that, that's one thing that fulfills me, but stinking Rick, you know, like we're partners in the business. So whatever awesome money I make, he makes too. So, it, and, and, and she's, and they're married. So it's like, she's has plenty of money. It's kind of like, dang it. Um, so it's like, uh, that's one goal, obviously, but it's not like the thing it's, it's more like my family, my future family, you know, it, it's creating legacy and generational wealth where they don't have to be at the point where I was, where I was broke, you know, um, it's kind of crazy. So uh, I'm telling you guys, the goal is to be rich, not look rich. Obviously, you know, get a Gucci belt, like get whatever it makes you feel good. But there's a very fine line between buying nice things for yourself, treating yourself and then being excess of it. Just think to yourself, if I spent $200,000 on a Lamborghini and I'm not at that 100K a year limit, 100K a year in passive income, what are you doing this for? Honestly, really, like if you want to make 100K a year in passive income, at the very least, uh, you're going to need at least a million dollars. So if you're not at that level of passive income, why are you going to spend 200 can on Lambo, right? Just think about that for a second. Um, and that's going to change a lot of stuff on you. Um, I'm a big no debt type person. Um, that's just how I am. Uh, so remember that too. And here's the, that's a really good school of thought, obviously. But here's a, another school of thought that I equally enjoy. I'm going to tell you right now. But... Um, Here's a Grant Cardone quote. I, I absolutely love this one. This is one of Rick's favorite quotes too. This is something I live by. You don't have a spending problem. You have an income problem. And this is a funny quote, obviously. Um, it kind of negates what I say on the other part, but not at the same time. I think for most people, that advice of trying to create that passive income is re like really important. But you also got to understand, I'm not telling you, oh, don't buy a cup of coffee every day. Like, of course, you got like Kevin O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary saying that, but like, sure, you'll save 1200 bucks a year if you don't buy coffee or, you know, two, three grand. But also at the same time, three grand to me is like, I just, I'm doing JV deal right now, 15K. It's like, like it, you just, I mean, right? Like it's just, that's it, one extra deal. I don't have to worry about the little things, you know? Uh, so that, that's other stuff, you know, um, that that's kind of like weird. I'm talking about like big purchases. Just be careful with that. The keeping up with the Joneses. A lot of people do this and they're cutting out of actually making true passive income because they're trying to impress people that don't even like them. Um, and that's a Gary V quote, I think. But uh, what I tell you is if you're doing it for yourself and you're buying it for yourself, go ahead. Um, and we actually have a kind of a good rule that mixes both of these together that me and Rick actually live by. Um, and it's going to be pretty, I, I can't wait to share it because it's going to be actually kind of cool. I think this is a really good video for a lot of people starting out, but um, what I can tell you is that's not the goal. And so what is true wealth? In my opinion, it's creating that passive income and never worry about bills and emergencies. 
the true end of the day, what is true wealth to me? And um, everyone's got their different opinion of it, but true wealth to me is freedom. I, I, I love freedom. This is why I love the United States of America. Um, this is the freest country on earth. And I'll say it a million times. I don't really care. Shout out to my Canadians, Pakistani people, uh, people from Africa watching, Asia. I'm telling you, this is the freest country on earth. This is why wholesaling real estate is amazing. That's truly a, a value I love and, and something that I take, I don't take for granted at all every day I wake up. So if I can implement that in my personal life, financial life is not being financially limited to something. Once you have that nine to five job, it's it sucks. That's not true freedom. And now I'm not married. I don't have kids. So I'm 22. So I don't really have that problem where it's like, hey, I got a nine to five. I got three kids I got to feed. I can never visit them. I can never be with my family like that. That I, I love. I visit my family uh, more than most people. So what I could tell you is because of what I do, I can work 10 hours a week, have all the money in the world coming in, have hundreds of thousands of passive income. And really get to spend time with my family, which is probably my one of my biggest priorities in life. Um, so that's freedom to me. That's the goal to me, and that's what I focus on. Just understand, guys, making 10k a month in passive income, 100k a month in passive income, depending how you spend it. I, I'm telling you, um, they're both rich. It just depends on how you spend it, what you do. So just general good rule, guys: buy asset, buy assets, not liabilities. I think you guys have heard this enough. But remember, guys, before you buy something, don't buy confidence, buy freedom. What I mean by this is a lot of people buy clothes or a watch or the cool whip um, because they, they think when they buy that, they're going to have confidence. And true confidence comes with within. And the confidence that I have today in my wholesaling, talking to people, getting in front of somebody, talking about what I love most, uh, wholesaling real estate and freedom and family, is because one thing is my biggest confidence there's two big confidence things I have. First of all, I love working out and I truly have the energy and I feel really confident in myself that like, I think I look great. That's a big confidence boost for me. Also big confidence boost is knowing that I can say no to anyone. I think it's called the FU rule um, is having FU money. I'm not going to go after that acronym, but having FU money means if someone says, Hey, you got to come in for a job today or this deal didn't work out. I really don't care. Like I got enough passive income coming in. Whole thing get banned tomorrow. I'm fine. That's where a lot of people want to go. And so buy confidence, uh, buy freedom. It give you the confidence. I'm telling you, freedom is the ultimate confidence booster. So the general rule, I'll tell you that me and Rick follow. I think everyone really needs to follow. And this is a really important rule. Um, Craig Cardone kind of talks about this. This is something that I have my own uh, thing with, but until you can make at least 100K a year in passive income, I'm telling most people live by this rule. It will bring you to financial freedom in wholesaling. How to become rich in wholesaling? Follow this rule, I promise you. If you just stick to this rule, this is the most important part. This is the 20% rule. The 20% rule is going to give you the key to financial freedom. This is my Dave Ramsey book type thing. This is like something I've used since I was 16, 15. Kind of hard because I was, I mean, living at home at that time. But if you use the 20% rule, so this is really what I've seen. So about 20% of the of all the income you make, you need to spend that. And I'm telling you, this is kind of a thing. You can hoard all the money you want in passive income. It, it's it's sometimes like dieting. Like if you eat a thousand calories a day, eventually you're just gonna give up and then you're just gonna go gorge yourself, and then you're worse where you actually started. 20% of your income, you should just spend it. I've seen, save more if you want, but give yourself 20% of your income, spend it on necessities, living, insurance, with, like you can only spend 20% of your income. Anything more, spend it, have fun, night out, whatever, have fun with your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Uh, what, what I could tell you is 20% of that, spend it. 80%, so we're gonna cut that in half. So 40% of that money, of your income is going to go to taxes. Oh, my tax bracket's 30% or like it overall it's 30. At the end of the day, after sales tax, paying taxes on everything, you're roughly going to be at 40% if you're making the true amount of money you, you need to, you need to do. I know 21% is the corporate tax rate. I'm just telling you, it's going to be 
leave 40% for taxes and you'll be fine. And I'm not saying I, I put about 25% away in taxes, but what I tell you right now, I think 40% just that's tax money. Don't deal with it. If anything is, if you have 40% uh, stored away or whatever, and you're fine, you, you pay less taxes, invest that, right? You're fine. Now the extra 40%, that is your money. Like that is your freedom fund, right? That's the money you're going to use in passive income. And that's the money you're going to use to change your life. Roughly, I, I was probably putting 50, 60, 70% into that. Um, I was pretty, I, I was living pretty uh, on the edge, 17, 18. But uh, I can tell you right now is that's a good general rule for most people. Now, <coughs> this rule doesn't apply for certain things. So let's say, for example, you know, um, you're taking care of a gra your grandma, grandpa. Um, don't act like, you know, oh, I can't feed grandpa today because it's not part of my 20%. Obviously, like there's there's leeways to it. Uh, family first, feeding your family, shelter, being safe. That That's an important part. But I think for most people trying to get to that wealth, I think this is a good guideline. It's not a must, uh, but for most people, that's what it's going to be. And at the end of the day, guys, um, I, I'm telling you, at the end of the day here, put around 40% away and use that to change your life. I mean, I'm 22 right now. You look at a compound interest, what the money I'm going to have at 60, 70, it's going to, it, it's stupid. Um, that's more money I could probably spend in my entire life. If I stopped right now, I'm telling you, if, if I just stopped like cold Turkey, stopped everything and just dealt my passive income, it, it just do the math of 22 to 60. It, it's crazy. Um, so I'm never really worried. Um, but just because I did that for five years, I can do whatever I want. Now imagine I, I'm making more and more money every year, you know, 40, 50, I'm making an extra 30, 300 K a year. It's, it's, it's good. So what I tell you is where do you put this 40%? And that's not my, I, this is not what I'm going to tell you. I, I'm not going to be telling you what to do, but what I tell you is I'll give you some suggestions and what I think. So in my humble, stupid opinion, um, I, I want to give one disclaimer. So I think one of the best ones, shocker is real estate. Obviously buying real estate, rentals, stuff like that. Probably the best one you can have. Um, specifically creative financing deals and actually renting those out. That's going to be your best one. Just knowing though that real estate, especially for rentals is not passive income. I, I want to stress this one more time. R rentals, Airbnbs, whatever you want. This is not as not passive income. If you understand that you'll be fine. The key here is not to be having 30 rentals at a time. And then that is, you're spending so much time with that, that it's taken away from your actual wholesaling operations. Let me repeat this one more time. You're going to have to delegate it, obviously, but it's not passive. Passive income is you buy it. You don't really have to look at it. You look at it once or twice a year, right? Rentals, you need to be looking at the reports every month. You got you to see what's going on, right? You got to be on top of things. So if you're okay with that, real estate is great. It's one of the best ones out there. It's where a lot of my net worth is. Uh, I will not disclose the other ones because like, I, I'm not going to tell you what my net worth is. It's I just, I, I don't give advice on anything else, but I'm telling you for most people, real estate rentals are going to be the best one. Own multiple business, businesses, stuff like that. So real estate, obviously stocks are great. You know, um, most people, if you get an index fund, you're going to be fine. Uh, but for like passive, passive income, um, if you're younger, get some good stocks, just make sure they're good companies. I am not the person to tell you about that. A lot of people do private money at 10 to 12% real estate's way better, but I know people do private money. I got private money out there too. So fine. Uh, a lot, no, a lot of people do precious metals, gold, silver, fine. Like I, I got no problem with that. I don't think you can really lose money in, in 20, 30 years with that. I think it's fine. Uh, a lot of people like digital currency. I'm going to give you no opinions on this. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give an opinion on it. Um, I'm telling you, I don't think it's bad. Um, but it's not like insanely. Um, at the end of the day, guys, do whatever you want. Figure it out. Um, the one gripe I do have precious metals, digital currency, um, and some stocks is like it won't be passive income. If that's something you're okay with, then fine. To make 100K a month in passive income, buying a digital currency is not going to like do it for you. Like It ain't going to pay you. Now, oh, you could stake uh, your stuff. And yeah, you could do that, obviously. Um, 
that's technically one way around it, but just understand that that's one part. Like I don't put all your eggs in one basket, diversify it with, but um, you got to be careful with some staking uh, with digital currencies, but I, I, this is not the channel for it. I'm not going to talk about that. Now, that's the way I, I would say you guys can invest it. What I can tell you right now is the ones to avoid. And this is where everyone's going to be throwing eggs at me. The ones I just listed, I think they're all fine. My least favorite one's private money and precious metals. Uh, the rest, I think, go full, full blown on those. I, I think those things are the future. Rentals, the future. Digital currency, the future. Um, private money, stocks. I, 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 the only one I'm not going to say avoid or do is I, I would tell you probably to avoid an NFT. Um, and now everyone's screaming at me. Oh, do, do, do. I, I don't know where that's going to be in the future. I think real estate stocks, the other stuff, they're probably going to be around 10, 15 years. I think right now, if you're going to build that for in the long term, um, you're going to be good. I, I just think buying an FT right now for 20 years down the road, that's too much of a risk for me. Now, obviously, you make trillions if you want but i'm just saying in 20 years you got you just got to do a statistical uh, analysis of it and see where it's going to be um, digital currency you can kind of see the way things are going should do well in the future metals should do well in the future private money you're fine stocks fine real estate great right people need a place to live population's going up um here's stuff i tell you to avoid right now this is stuff that's not passive this is where people are going to be screaming at me it's where people are just angry at me this is where I'm getting cussed at everywhere. But let me tell you, here's what I say to a point. Go scream at me all you want. I, I just don't think these are good. Amazon FBA does not passive income. You're going to make 12% having VAs run a business for you. That's way worse than real estate. Okay? I could sell my real estate whenever I want. That Amazon FBA store is a little harder to sell. A lot of people are pushing it right now because they make like a percent off of your thing. And you got to be pushing it. Amazon can just give you the middle finger one day and just kick you off and then all that investment's lost drop shipping i made a good amount of drop shipping when i was like 15 16 it's just that business is not there anymore as it, it really is as it should be um people just trust amazon better forex i no get out of there okay like we're not gonna foreign like like that the whole forex currency exchange thing i it's not there. I'm telling you right now, it's, I have never done it. Um, I've done my hard research on it. No bonds. In my opinion, real estate's risky enough. I'm not going to make 5% of my money. It, it's not even falling with inflation right now. So that's what I can tell you right now. I, I just, for long-term wealth, if you want to focus on having time freedom, an Amazon FBA store it ain't going to be it. Okay. Drop shipping ain't going to be it. So that's my honest 43 minutes of ranting about how to get rich in wholesaling real estate. That's insanely condensed. Um, attention to some questions. Let's kind of see what, what I think about things in the future and um, talk about it. But um, let's, uh, let's talk. TH, first of the party, what is up? How are you? How are you? Wholesaling fam, what is up? Uh, just watch Rick's probate video. Awesome. What's awesome here? I think I've talked about this one before, but uh, get your first deal because of this guy. If you guys got your first deal for me, go hit me up. I'd love talking to you. I love interviewing. Love hearing your stories. Just makes me happy. I got, um, I'll give a quick shout out. I just love getting motivation for the day. Um, so obviously this is in the wholesaling houses for real Facebook group. Um, but let's kind of break it down. So um, let's see where this is at. Um, let's go pop it up. See what we got. Um, recent posts. I try to show this. Um, let this load up. Quick motivation for the day. I'm excited about this one. Um, stuff like this always pumps me up. So, um. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here it is. All right. Here's the motivation for the day. Okay. From uh, Michael. Shout out to Michael here. Uh, let's get it going. Oops. So, Michael, cool story here. Uh, let's zoom this in a little better today here. 
Michael basically says here, this is awesome story. This is stuff that like pumps me up. Um, where is it? All right. Michael says, just a quick update. I've been watching gurus and researching wholesaling for about four months now. I still don't know if I know everything I need to, but I will say this. After going through Zach's free course, I finally get, I got the nerve to get my uh, to get my first deal. I got a contract with the seller yesterday. I sold to a buyer today with a profit of $10,250. Woo! Zach is the man. I wish I could have found this uh, page four months ago. I've never spent any money with gurus either. Thanks, Zach, for helping others become successful. I'm telling you right now, if that doesn't get you absolutely fired up about this wholesaling business and how exciting this business can be and how much you can change your life. I don't know what will I'm telling you that gets me jacked up. That gets me excited. That gets me going. That, that makes me think that I can change the world here and change people's lives. I know I'm changing people's lives right now. I, I it's amazing. I, I, I just can't believe it. It makes me so happy. Um, it really, it, it's exciting. Um, so I'm pumped up for it. I love just hearing people's stories and that makes me pretty happy. So uh, shout out to that. Uh, shout out. Like that's, that's an amazing story. I love it. Um, awesome, Michael. Appreciate you. You're awesome, bro. Uh, keep it up. What's up, MJJ Smooth Criminal? Christopher coming from Boise. What is up? How are you? What's up, Brian? I think I tried scaling too quick. A lot of people have that issue. Um, scaling slow, but like it, you... I, it's Tony Robbins quote. You are, um, what is it? You under, you overestimate what you can do in a short amount of time, but you underestimate what you do in a long amount of time. And that's the honest truth. Um, you, you have a goal to scale up in a year. You're probably going to be underwhelmed of what you can do, but over the 10, 15 years, it just compounds. I, I tell you this right now. It, it's, it's crazy. Alan says, what's up, Zach? Can you help me find the ARV whenever you're done with this lecture? Wow, oh, I feel like a college professor now. Should I get the college professor jacket with the uh, elbow things? <laughs> uh, Sam says, hey, does anyone have a title company in Tampa they recommend? Go hit Sam up. True wealth is good. True that. What's up? Millionaire Dropout says, this is a crazy question, but how tall you are? Um, I am 5'3". I'm 5'3". I'm 4'3". I'm 2'3". I'm 6'3". I'm 6'7'3". I'm six, I, does it matter? I, that's not as true. But since you're asking, I will say this on air. I am 6'1". If that means anything. Um, do you see how I'll just, I, I'll just give up random height? Like, it doesn't matter. I don't think me being two feet tall or eight feet tall is going to change things um, on this channel. But if you need to know, I'm 6'1". If you're going to go buy me a shirt, I'm a medium, I guess. I have a large. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Danny? How are you? Cold calling right now. That's awesome. I got my first water shutoff list because of you and your advice. Christopher, thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm telling you, like it means a lot to me. If people are getting these water shutoff lists that no gurus are talking about. Uh, the main man, Zach, I'm ready to learn. Let's go. What's up? Not giving up. Let's go. Woo. Ric Flair. Woo. Um, Ric Flair. Woo. Go. Woo. Want a guru. Uh, there's a lot of wholesalers in my market. I wish I could have wholesale virtually, but I feel like I need to have my money to you. Well, Ryan, let me know what market you're in. Um, my European brother over here. I need to know how to say your name the right way. Um, please, if you tell me I pronounce it the right way, I'd love to say it. Uh, Mr. Petrovic, uh, that's what I'll say. Uh, where are your top three tips for beginners in wholesaling? I know specifically you're in Europe, so virtual wholesaling. Number one is finding the right market. I got plenty of videos in freewholesaling.com on how to do that. Next here is since you're virtual, I'd probably focus on cold calling. Uh, no, next tip for you, I'd say if you have an accent, nobody really cares about your accent. It's all about confidence. So number two is going to be uh, confidence. And number three is consistency. You need to be consistent. I'm telling you, that is probably one of the biggest game changers I can tell you right now. Consistency rules. Thomas says, what's the difference between pulling pre-probates on PropStream and getting probate lists from the county clerk of the court? Pre-probates are just, it's cross-referencing data of people that passed away um, from the people that actually filed a probate in the clerk of the court. Uh, completely different. No one files anything on a pre-probate. 
Uh, Tila, what is up? Samantha, haven't title wholesaler friendly. Okay. Uh, Angel says, how do you go about making sure a buyer doesn't steal your deal? Uh, use the freewholesaling.com contract. Use that assignment of contract. You're going to be fine. Striving Brian says, where do you pull water shutoffs? List REI.com and in person at your utility department or just cold call them. Sam's close to his first deal. Awesome. Love to see it. Let's see. Appreciate everyone saying my screen's good. Angel, I thought it was black, but I think his uh, thing booted out. So I hope we're hardwired. We got the, we, we got a good PC. We got the AK cinema camera. Um, I don't know what else. Um, I hope we're all good. I put a lot of precautions to make sure this is all good. Uh, MJJ Smooth Criminal says, how do you get a seller to budge at their current price? Her current price is $80,000, but with an outdated kitchen virtual offer, by the way. Um, you got to offer low. Uh, if they're stuck at a price, they're stuck at a price. Tell them to list with a realtor. Um, and really, if their motivation is fine, you, you got to get it. Like, MJJ Smooth Criminal, let me know. What would a cash buyer pay? Um, I just want to see. Libby says, thank you. Thank you. Trip doesn't have to be expensive. Oh, yeah. Push from New Jersey. Zach Spitten. Appreciate that. Uh, Rashen says, uh, been cold calling two hours a day and already called 300 addresses. Many people interested. However, they declined my offer, but I feel like I'm close to getting a deal. Three, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, man, 300 calls are nowhere near what you have to be to get a deal. You got to pump those numbers up. Um, let me know what the list uh, that may be different, but keep going. Like, don't give up. I'm telling you, like, this is not the time to be given up. Um, keep it up. Raphael says, Hey Zach, what if a property has two different trusts? Also what if the homeowner lives in a different state, no big deal. Use like a dot loop DocuSign, e-signing services, free ones on like Adobe. Um, if the property has two different trusts as the owner, you just have to talk to the owner and using the mailing address, true people search comment. That's really going to be where you're going to find it. Roshan, that's tough. Keep it up. Oh yeah. Samuel says, what contracts do you use to hire acquisitions and disposition managers? They're 1099. So usually an NDA. Uh, I, I don't put them under contract or something. Julian, what is up? Lawrence, what is up? Uh, I've started the, I started the beginning January, and I have to say this channel is the most informational wholesale channel compared to others, in my opinion. That means a lot to me. Um, I, I try my best. You know, we give three YouTube shorts a day, and then one like long form content a day. Um, usually, it's a two hour video. And then you get like the little shorts, freewholesaling.com. I mean, all the tools are out here. Um, I just live being, I just like going live with you guys and talking to you guys. Honestly, I don't have to do lives. I just release one video a day and like not deal with you guys anymore. And it'd be a lot easier. Um, but I truly like connecting with you guys. And I, I think that's one thing I truly love. Um, and I think I can really impact more people doing it. So that's why we do it. That's why we focus hard on it. And I truly believe that's a big difference for a lot of people. Julian, same bro. Uh, Lawrence says, I have a deal. I need a silent partner uh, for what? If it's wholesaling, you do it yourself, but okay. Good evening. Drying for dollars right now. Awesome, Manuel. Keep your eyes on the road. Um, direct mail sucks and cold calling is worse. Well, that's nice. Everyone's got their own opinion. Um, I mean, I. You, if you have that opinion, you should... Pro Lister nonsense. Cold calling is not a real business. Um, okay. Well, whoever's saying that behind the screen, um, my personal opinion is make your own Facebook group, create your own YouTube channel, go live five days, four days a week, put out a video every single day for your two plus years straight. And then just tell everybody that direct mail and cold calling sucks and lists are nonsense. And cold calling is not real, really marketing. 
go out here. Let's see who does better. I, I just, it, in my opinion, I, I say direct mail is good when it comes to, when you're at enough money where you can scale it. Yes. Cold calling. How many people in this chat have gotten their first deal cold calling or have gotten a deal cold calling? And lists are nonsense. I lists are marketing the life on your business. If you truly don't believe that, I, I'm sorry, but like you have your information wrong. I just, you always got one hater in the chat, so it's nice. I'll find who that person is. I'll probably boom out of the group. Um, no, I'll just suspend. You probably you could probably just suspend somebody for a little bit or DM them and see like what's up. But six k need nine k return. Anybody interested? Do not hit Lawrence up with that deal. It does not sound like a good deal at all. Good evening. What's up? Go to Moji. I appreciate that. We leave the goat to Rick Ginn. Um, but that's awesome. I pre I I'll take the compliments. Trust me. Oh. Don't give me compliments. Don't give me compliments. Ooh, I hate them. But um, I'm just kidding. I'm just having a good time. I, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to help the people out, and uh, that's the goal here. Um, that's that's what we focus on hard, and th that's what we try to do. So I appreciate that. Should I focus on marketing tactic? And let's see. All right. Um, hold on me. All right. Uh, should I focus on marketing tactic and hone in on, should I go straight for multiple streams of marketing? I think you should go on one stream of marketing, first of all, and then scale up from there. I think focusing, especially when you're starting out, you just started out in January. Most people drawing for all is going to be your best option. Honing down on that and cold calling um, depends on your budget, where you're coming from. Um, but that's kind of what I, Get your first deal drawing for dollars from most people and then scale up from there. I just think the SMS is going to get too confusing and it's really doing capital. If you're not meant to offer me in this business, it's probably not going to be good. Um, I think the drawing for dollars is really good for most people starting out. What's your record wholesale fee? I think 120. 120 uh, last year. Um, and the one I'm doing now would be more. The one we keep telling you guys, we're waiting for the profit to come out, but that's kind of a wholesale, so it doesn't count. Um, that was double closed, <laughs> uh, writing offers and listening. What's up, Steven. That's awesome. St. Pete in the house. Mark Anthony says, let's go. Awesome. Uh, Chelsea has, as a former lead development manager in corporate America, the basics are so important. You just need a good list and need to call it consistently. 100%. Uh, I have two VAs. They call six hours a day. We get leads, but I don't know how to run comps and we can't bringing leads every day. We are calling the tired landlord list. So I'm going to give you some honest truth. I ain't going to sugarcoat this. This is going to be vinegar. It ain't going to be honey. Um, you shouldn't have VAs if you can't run comps. If you don't know how to run comps or do A or Vs, you should not have a VA, uh, especially two. Um, love you. Love you. Uh, all love for you guys, but this is part of scaling too fast and you, you will not, if you're spending money on VAs and marketing like this and you can't comp right or giving the offers right, you're going to fire those VAs because you got no money coming in. I, I'm saying this respectfully in the nicest way possible. Do this business yourself. I always tell people make 100K first by yourself before you start trying to scale up. Um, and make 100K, you'll know how to comp in your market by doing that. It just, I hate, I hate saying it the mean way, but like that, no sugarcoating it. Keep it 100 with you guys. That's the truth. Um, what's up? Can we talk about follow-up? How often, how much is too much? SMS, cold calling, direct mail, email. My personal opinion, there's never really too much follow-up. Oh, you know, Zach cares too much. He keeps calling me every day, seeing how I am. You know, if you just care about the sellers and being empathetic, I general rule maybe once or twice on like a hot lead. Uh, maybe once a day if it's like really hot. Breed decent leads. Once a week, twice a week, if you want, um, just call, just calling them. It's not even cold calling too much. Uh, that's my opinion. Cold calling is better than SMS. Direct mail is really good for scaling. Um, it, it's not the ultimate one, obviously, um, but for a lot of people scaling up in seven figures, they do really good direct mail. Um, you gotta see it. So we just hit three thousand people joining MailingMaster.com, which I think it's pretty like I'm beyond like I'm blown away by that. Um, so just give a quick shout out to everyone on uh, mailingmastery.com. So that's nowhere near like free wholesaling. 
Um, but we have a big announcement of free wholesaling coming up. Uh, we're about to hit a new member um, landmark milestone and uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, that'll probably be another week before we get that. But wh wh what I could tell you right now is uh, mailingmastery.com. It's smaller. So 3000 is kind of insanely big. But uh, we made that just to show people how to scale up the right way with direct mail because to even learn direct mail, that's a five, $6,000 course at minimum. There's no free course out there really for direct mail the right way with live calls, everything. So mailing mastery, number one, it's free. I just really quick, it's free. Okay. I have me closing deals, talking to sellers on there. Um, me showing you the direct mail we use, um, everything like that. Mailing mastery. If you want to make a hundred K a month with direct mail, it's the ultimate one. Um, that's what I tell you right now. Thomas says, Hey Zach from Charlotte. What is up? Uh, network and find someone in the area market that you're looking to wholesale in. Have you taken pictures or walked through buyers to property and potential JV? Um, uh, depends on the part partner. So if I'm finding someone in a market and you're looking to wholesale in, have them take the pictures and you work on the cash buyer. Maybe in your favorite books, I'm more of a information on the internet type person, but traction, if you're looking to scale, unleash the power within Tony Robbins, um, get in trouble. But like, I, we got this book right here. I, it's the given tree. I love this book. I won't show you the back of it, but a lot of people know the back of the book. Um, scared me as a kid. Um, but um, yeah, what I can tell you is a lot of really good books out there. I think a lot of the information you find online on like YouTube is probably going to be the same or better. They've got a lot of Bob Proctor, um, Earl Nightingale. Look him, look him up on, um, I think, I think it's something about the truth. Uh, Nightingale. I've listened to that probably a hundred times. Um, let me get it. Strangest secret. Uh, I'm going to put this up right here. I'm going to give you a link. Um, all right. I'm going to put it in the comments because I, I think it's that powerful. I don't promote anyone's YouTube like video ever, but I mean, he passed away. So whatever. He's not a guru anymore, I guess. But um, I put it in the comments. If you guys want to check it out. I'm telling you, just listen to that. It's a really powerful, it's not even a wholesaling video, but like it's more of a mindset thing. And it, it's, it, at the end of the day, if you want the synopsis of it, it, it's honestly like you are how you think and how powerful your mind is. And the difference between those who are successful and not, and this is a book from, I, this was like a, like a video from the forties. But even then you see like in forties in corporate America, where are the people that are successful and not? And that really, it stands true even, even to today. Um, I think it's pretty cool. 45 single, no kids. I like nice cars and houses. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Right. Uh, watching the stream. What's up, Brandon? Appreciate that. You are so right. Zach, the topic is great to talk about greatest country on earth. Love it. Um, true wealth is having opportunity, but our freedoms are under attack. We are entrepreneurs. We need a foundation turning around starts with success. I'm not going to get in the political or economic thing. Uh, the, if you're rich enough, you, you'll find a way to skirt around that. There's always opportunity. I'm not going to political or economic things though. Uh, maybe economic, but is there a way where I can have a one with you? Nobody else. So you can help me with my business. Come tomorrow on my one-on-ones and talk to me. I, I, I tell you, I just, it's a scarcity mindset because if I talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, if I give you one, if I give you one-on-one -on -one attention on my time, first of all, you will probably not, you, you couldn't pay me enough. Uh, most people to get one-on-one -on -one for like of my undivided attention. That's why I don't like go out here, fly to, I won't fly to Phoenix, Arizona to go be, be a speaker at your mastermind. Even though you asked me three times a year. I, it's not worth my time. It's 15 hours of my time. I'd rather spend with my family. That is invaluable time for me. Now you give me a million, I'd probably come out for five hours. You know, I'd be like, okay, right? But like, what I can tell you is I'm giving up something very valuable in my personal time, time away from my family doing these lives. So if I'm giving you a one-on-one, -on -one, if I give you from my heart, my true, like what I think of something, 
and I'm helping with your business, I want everyone else to benefit from that conversation. And you have a scarcity mindset of, oh, maybe someone else in Dallas is going to hear that and do that. I, I don't want to talk to you. Like if you're in Dallas and I'm giving you facts and I'm spitting facts to you and information about like how to like what how to fix your business. Okay, maybe there's like five people in Dallas that might use that info. Hoopla. But there's probably 3,994 people around the entire country that got a lot of value from that. Um, and I'm choosing those over the five. Uh, that's the truth. True wealth is having an opportunity, but our freedoms starts with success. Oh, yeah. I want that FU money, Zach. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're all working on it, right? Uh, making offers while auditing this live program. Great content. Um, Zach, pay our taxes, put away for charities. We like to support and invest back in the business model. I keep moving forward. Hey, I, I love charity. Um, love feeding the, like, I love, mo I put a lot to charity. Um, I'm not going to talk about this live cause I, it just, I don't, I don't need to. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna be the person that tips somebody a hundred bucks at a restaurant because they're a single mom. that gave me a, a story that was connecting with me, and then I'm gonna go post a receipt on social media for you guys to see. What you guys see from me is what I want you to see. If I go do something great for charity wise, I I, I don't do it for the recognition. I do because it, it truly helps me in my heart. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm big on giving to charity, but I cannot tell somebody right now that's struggling. They're trying to change their life to go donate to charity. I'm not the person that says you have to, you have to donate 10% of charity. You know, um, I'm blessed in my life where I, me and Rick, we can go spend money and help people out. Right. Um, and you know, this is partially charity, you know, doing this, going live streams. Obviously I get a lot of JV deals sent to me, make a ton of money doing it, but, um, outside charity stuff I'm really big on, but I, I will not talk about it. Um, and that's the last I want to talk about that, but yeah, that, that is one part of personal finance guys I could say. Um, but yeah, what's up, Keaton? Keaton's the killer out here in Georgia. What is up, bro? Justin, what is up? What is up? Keaton, I don't want to hear any story about the Georgia Bulldogs, okay? We get it. We get it. You're, you're winners. Caters are losers. I get it. <laughs> Congrats, though, man. I, I, bet, I bet you're ecstatic, though. Uh, so good for you. You've had to wait a lot, long time for that. So whatever. Uh, wholesale historical buildings. Wholesaling historical buildings is okay. Um, it's okay, I guess. Uh, but uh, historical buildings, uh, it depends what you call historical. Are we talking 1800s? Are we talking like 1920s houses? Because those are like, I know houses are from 1813 that like people are wholesaling. And that's different than like a 1940s house. Historical, in my opinion, just because I'm in Florida, is like 1920s um, to like 40s because there ain't much history in Florida uh, until they created air conditioning. So love the 20-40-40. Ideal ratio out monies 40 to tax fund. Leave some for H. Oh, no. Yeah. HSA account, always ready to pay government, no stress. I tell you, the stress of having to pay taxes is never worth it. Um, 40%. That 20%, I would probably put for health insurance. Um, but you do it at, at uh, HSA. That's what I include for myself. Um, obviously, th that's kind of what we're looking at. Where entrepreneurs are lucky, we can write off a lot of this stuff. LLC, S Corp. I think most people, an S Corp is going to be the best one if you're starting to do some deals. If you're under 150K, if you're married, 300. Uh, above 500, you're probably going to need a C Corp. Even though I'm in Florida and I got no taxes, basically, but uh, I have to be a C corporation because of the money you make. Uh, be success, be massively successful, never give up. Keep your nose to the grindstone. The goal always in front of you. Persistence pays off. Grad graduate your business. Uh, wholesale flip, buy and hold. Awesome. I agree. Question from Healing Sound says on MLS property, when the contract says it's your choice of title company. Real estate agent sends the contract to the title agency, right? Um, they could do it or you can. I don't think it really matters. if You, you got to use your title company though, but yeah. All right, Justin, digital currency guy. Awesome. Is there any way you can wholesale under 18? All the time. Uh, I wholesale the first deal at 17. So yeah. 
you can just have a legal gardener or someone sign the contract for you or make an LLC. There's a lot of loopholes around it. So you just got to be careful. Also, guys, you want to send me any deals? Uh, my Dispo team, honestly, I think right now, what's it, 6, 619 uh, Eastern? If you send a deal, I think now, you'll probably get a call from my Dispo team in like an hour or two. Because I, I know he, he's working on a bunch of deals and the team. Um, but yeah, if you send, send your deals over, we can help you out with it. Um, www.flipwithwork.com slash JV. No, you don't have to send me five grand in collateral and we'll give it back after a deal. I, I don't do that. I don't cap how much money you can make with us. If you have a 50K deal, we'll give you 25K. Um, we split the deals. If you want to earn why you learn, we'll teach you exactly how to do your first deal with you on the Dispo side. Um, literally use my dispositions team. Um, go you literally use the same dispositions team that I use in my wholesaling business. You can literally use them. This is kind of their side hustle. They, they always wanted to get into uh, the internet thing we do. Um, they saw, they've seen it's grown tremendously. Um, and so their little side hustle is like, all right, well, we'll do deal with your, deals with your subscribers and make more money. I'm like, all right, bet. So this is kind of for them. I, I'm, I get a ton of money from this too. Um, but yeah, www.flipthework.com slash JV if you want to send us a deal. Um, got it underway. We got, I think we got... Um, we got, I think we got this month or close to like 27 in the pipeline. So of Jay's JV deals. So it's like our dispo team can handle it. And just imagine like why I do what I do. So I'm just, I'll be completely honest why I do what I do. Like I, it's amazing with this JV, uh, this thing, ain't, this JV thing ain't going to go away. So if you got a deal, send it over. Um, we'll help you out. It's going to be most of my dispo team. Um, but Sometimes, uh, for if you close a deal with us, you'll definitely get a personal call from me, though. Um, at the end, after you close the deal, I always love giving people calls, get you on the podcast, get you on. But, um, yeah, you personally, uh, if you send your deal over and you actually execute it, get the cash buyer, everything, um, and you work with the dispo team, I'll, I'll obviously get a personal call, uh, from me and Rick, but, um, that's after get the deal done first. Um, gotta, mo gotta, gotta motivate you guys. Right. Or if you just want to talk to me, you got no deal every Thursday, wholesaling houses for real Facebook group, go, uh, hop on, talk to me around 5 30 PM, uh, Eastern. So stake, I don't think staking is too risky. Um, if you know what you're doing the right way, um, now, if you're using like a service or something and like you're doing a bad fine, but I think staking is fine. Um, but for most people, it's not, it's not really worth it. Uh, Quinn says, what's the main thing you need in a contract with an agent? Make sure you can wholesale it. That's probably gonna be the top thing. Our investor says drop shipping, been there, done that. Not a great profit vehicle for long-term wealth. I, I promise you right now, if I did drop shipping, I could probably, probably not make seven figures on it, but I could easily probably make 10 15k a month in profit like i just I, I personally know i could do that uh but it's, it's uh, wholesaling so much better um real estate always been is the very best way to accumulate that's where i'm at like um this plus the jv deals that i do is like it's more money than i can ever make if i sold the course um i always ask this like what's the best best wealth vehicle just look at me probably by next year i'll be making hopefully making more money JVing with people than actually in my actual business. And I run a seven figure wholesaling operation. Okay. In my local market and virtual wholesaling. So you think about that for a second, it's like, Whoa. So just keep that in mind guys. Um, can you wholesale a sheriff sale house? Depends if the sale is already going on now. Um, it really depends. What's up? What's up? Your course is amazing. Thank you, Armando. Hey, bro. Is five hours a day cold calling a good amount? Oh, yeah. That's what I did. Don't forget to smash the like button for all this value. Hope. You are amazing. Thank you so much. That's that's awesome. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, I love people reminding people to smash the like button and subscribe. Every time you like this video, another guru cries. Good job, Michael. Great job, Michael Hoyt. Thank you. Of course. No pro. Oh, thank you, Rick. Oh my gosh. Mark says the gurus are passing out right now. Oh, it's enough. They're, they're done. They can't handle this. I know they, they seem someone successful without them. It's crazy. 
Uh, do I need an LLC before wholesaling? My opinion is no. I don't really think you do need an LLC. Um, get, get two deals first and then you'll be fine. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you have a lawyer write up your contracts to use the same contract for multiple states? Uh, each state's a tad different, uh, but the lawyer, yes, they, they write up my contracts. Uh, Ashley, I was just trying to be random. I was just trying to be funny. Like, nobody cares how tall you are. Um, What's the difference between... I uh, already explained this one. My biggest hurdle is contracts, not trying to get in legal trouble. Ask the title company, you should be fine. They usually have uh, lawyers there. They'll look it over. What's up, Daniel? Hi, what service do you advise to take pictures when virtual hosting in one of your previous videos? Uh, Facebook, go use them. I, I think there's like BPO agents that'll do it too. Um, realtors, uh, Facebook job groups, anything like an iPhone, uh, probably be fine. Or a good like Android camera. I can tell you are. I'm 60 years young now. Grew up broke. Always searching, but never had the right opportunity. Now wholesaling excited. Breaking cycle of poverty. I love it. Woo! Oh, that's great. You're 5'10". That, 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 that changes everything, right? Play JV in Detroit Metro. That's one of our best markets to JV in. So, yes. Are all of your videos on YouTube way better uh, than the gurus just found about you from Mike's post in the group, man. Thank you. Yeah, all the videos are on the Zach and YouTube channel and the Flip of the Rick YouTube channel. Uh, both have different content, uh, but the lives are the same. Consistency is key. Peach is here uh, out of Phoenix. Awesome. Love it. What's the best market in North Carolina? And is Arizona? Arizona is okay market depending where you're at. Uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina is probably the best one I could say in North Carolina. South Florida is harder. You know, a lot of people are coming in. Um, th there's pockets that work. And you got to find the low ARVs. That's really going to have the best results. Yes, they are. Zach, you're the man. Thank you, William and Amy. I appreciate that. Love connecting with you. Yes, we have this contract, a finder's fee contract for bird dogs. I just do a JV agreement, though. Like, but it's got to be on. Depends if this is an on market deal or an off market deal. I paid four grand for a wholesaling course and I get more out of your channel. Thank you. Thank you, William. I don't mention the person, but I think we all know what a $4,000 wholesaling course is. You've been through the ringer and I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Can't trust the 6 1 guys. I just, everyone knows I'm 6 1. Is, is that, does that change everything? Like, I, whatever. Why do you think guys saw me trying to dunk? It's like it's hard. It's hard for me trying to dunk. Okay, it's hard for it's hard for us guys out there. You know, under under seven feet to go dunk. Mateo says, "Can I use a title company from another state?" Um, sure, but I prefer the ones near you. Coco and Zillow leads, awesome. Was his first deal? Come on. Awesome. Tell you a lot of people like a lot of people might talk smack about uh, cold calling. I'm telling you, it's one of the best ones out there, especially when you're starting out. I cannot say it. I, I cannot stress how important it is. So yeah. All right, let's go see here. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Um. Pop this up. Where are you at? Um, uh, Danny says, can I do a one-on-one -on -one tomorrow of a proposal for you? Whatever you want. Um, all the one-on-ones, wholesaling us for real. That's where you get the link. So you want to hop on talk? We'll, we'll talk. What's a good way to calculate an offer price on a multi-unit? Um, oops, I think I forgot a charger. All right, we're back. There we go. All right, uh, what's good? 
Well, it's a good way to calculate an offer price on a multi-unit. I noticed a five-unit complex not far from me. Does it appear to be dated and it sold for almost a million above retail? Insane. Uh, cash flow and appreciation, especially in the Inland Empire, that's really where you're going to have to be focusing, like really importantly on. Uh, Woken says, ain't got a deal yet, but I'm learning how. I'm going to try 10 offers per day and hopefully that gets me something uh, with a month or two. If you have the right numbers, if you give enough offers consistently of people that are interested, you're going to do well. It's when you give offers that people that aren't. Zach, you're a goat. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you have to modify a two-part form to be assignable? How do you modify a 2D form? I mean, a two... I'm talking about a contract or... 2T? Let me see. Oh, is this the real estate contract? Oh, the um, North Carolina real uh, the realtor contract. Yeah, I mean you. Um, you can modify it for what you want, but I, I just use a regular one. Uh, MJJ, I gotta check the laws in North Carolina for that. But like for the deals we do, we're fine with our contracts. Um. MJJ Smith Criminal says it's a FISBO and offered 72 with paid closing costs. She said it's not even the highest, which I don't believe, but she'll keep me in mind. I see cash buyer paying. Yeah. It, 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 you're going to be losing money at 80, right? So I don't think it's worth it. Just got to the next one, you know? Man, I just got off the phone with renegotiating with a seller. I locked up a couple weeks ago, which is about to be my first closed deal. Man, that was intense, but worth it. Markel! Love it. Come on. Markel, the man, the weaponized assault penguin, not saying the acronym on that, but love it, man. That's awesome. Congrats. Tyler, what's the best recommendation for pulling lists and skip tracing? Pulling lists, either use batch, use code Zach to get 50% off of that. Listrei.com, L I S T R E I.com. Skip tracing. TruePeopleSearch.com is going to be the best one. It's going to be free, but you could use like Batch on there too if you want. It, it really depends if you're going to pay for it. PropStream, ListRI.com, it's got some good skip tracing too. Um, honestly, it really depends. Um, uh, did you have a lawyer write up your car? Okay, I already answered that three, three times. Uh, trying $4, I've come across properties owned by LLCs that have sat on the property in a long time without doing anything is a good idea to market to yeah market to those people oh yeah even as LLC I'll market to the vacants uh thanks Rick and Zach for all you do for us blessings from Minnesota blessings awesome uh love to see that congrats thank you should I try to wholesale historical buildings yes it's a deal it's a deal right Isaiah says, what percentage commission do you pay your acquisitions and dispositions people? Acquisitions close to 15 to 10. Dispo is 5 to, pen, five to 10, just dependent. Uh, roughly over 20 sometimes for acquisitions. They do multiple deals though. Um, uh, Russian Eskimo. What is up? How do you put a lockbox and get cash buyers to inspect the property? What needs to be negotiated on the contract like inspection contingency? Uh, the inspection period will be on there on the contract, especially if you go to freeholstling.com, use that contract. So I really don't see an issue with that. Um, you have a runner go out there, do the lockbox, and then have someone show the cash buyer if it's all virtual, though, like what you're doing there. Edwin, what is up? Fire emoji. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Um, Justin Joe says, don't know if you've answered this before, but if SMS is my primary source of marketing, how many texts should I be sending a day to reach my goal of hundred K a year or a month? That's okay. If you're doing hundred K a month, you're going to be, uh, at least five to 10 a day, 
thousand. If you're probably if you need a hundred k a year, maybe one to two. Nothing too crazy. How do I call people? Can you go over the steps, please? Of course, Tanya. Here's the steps. Two ways. This is how you cold call. You have some two questions here. Number one, are you the owner of the property? And number two, are you interested? Then if they are interested, you ask them the four questions here. These are four pillars of wholesaling. Motivation, condition, time frame, price. Motivation, why they're looking to sell the property. Condition, how's the flooring, AC, roof, repairs. Uh, time frame, when are they looking to sell? Within a month, two months, three months. And then price, how much they need to actually sell the property for. Uh, Jesse, what is up? Uh, when talking to a motivated seller, can I give my full name to them over the phone? I don't really see a problem with that, but hey, it really depends. Uh, it just depends how bad it's going to be. Corey, uh, what is up, Corey? How are you today? Uh, what's up, Zach? I'm super busy today. Just dropped in to smash that like and tell that you're the goat of wholesaling. Corey, I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Tanya says, I don't know how to use a dialer. Please go over the steps on how to use a dialer. Um, make a Get some deals first before you use a, a dialer. I would say probably like 100K if you want to reinvest it. But um, I would say the best way to use a dialer is to have enough leads. If you're using Batch or ListRA.com to be pulling your list, then sure. Um, the best way to use a dialer is you just import the leads in there. And then start dialing, get the phone numbers. You got to buy like probably 10 to 15 for it to be work to work. And it should be there. Uh, work on a video like that. 200 K per year, probably two, 3000 a day. That's really where you want to be at. I'm in Flint. Awesome. How can I wholesale real estate at 15? The same way you do it at 16, seven, uh, at 15, 16, 17, 14, 12. Um, have a parent, a legal guardian, uh, sign it for you. And you go from there, you can actually create an LLC with a parent and then get the money from there. There's a lot of creative ways to do it. What's up? Hey, Zach, love your content. Uh, what is a good finder's fee to negotiate when sending leads over to real estate agents for sellers? Uh, half, half to a quarter. Uh, but you can't really get the full commission, so you got to be careful with it. Uh, Michigan in the house, awesome. Please go over the steps on how to use a dialer. I already went over that. Uh, Gabriel, you've got to have a parent or adult. Oh, yeah, Gabriel, of course. Um, what do you think about Raleigh, North Carolina for a wholesale market? Raleigh's not too bad of a wholesale market. As she said, oh, Zach has great parents. Uh, oh, I have the best parents in the world. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. 1860, the plaque from the city. Hey, go wholesale it. I don't, I don't see any uh, problem with that. I mean, to each their own, but I think you get a deal doing that. I don't, I don't really see a problem with that. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if you answered this before, but if SMS is my primary air, answer that one. Gabriel says, how do you do your due diligence for contracts and specific house virtually? So virtually I do my due diligence for the contract by just having a runner go there and take pictures of the house so I can confirm the condition of it. Um, that's specifically what we do. Do D do asks, so I don't have a relationship established with an investor friendly real estate agent yet. How do you recommend comping properties in non-disclosure states without sales data provided? Use listrei.com batch leads. They get great estimates. Go to Zillow and actually go to the sale price and it'll give you, it won't give you the sale price, but it'll give you the sale uh, price per square foot. So it's sold for a hundred dollars a square foot and you know, it's 1200 square feet. You know, the property sold for 120 K. Yeah. One arrow says, Zach, thank you for all you do for us. Have you ever thought about wholesaling event for two to three days? Uh, that goes against the entire grain of what I do. Um, I literally, I, I don't want to charge for knowledge. That's what these events are for. Um, I don't really, like. I just think that's kind of off the cusp of what, uh, I stand for of charging money, uh, to learn wholesaling. Um, that's kind of what I think. 
Try I, if I if you have an event, I get a ton of people there. Trust me, I know that, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, Bree says, "I just came in here and heard send deals. I have a home under contract. What's the link? www.flippethrick.com slash jv. So www.flippethrick.com slash jv. Uh, send it over, Bree. Got it. Awesome. Of course, let's go." Wogan says, if you can't get your parents to sign a contract, try your friends 18 that you trust. That's a rough one sometimes, but yeah. Um, Caesar says, I went to the clerk uh, court office and they absolutely said no to give me code violation. Even if I filed for a FOIA, they said they uh, would not. I live in Pennsylvania. Uh, speak to the uh, manager. I'm telling you right now. Also have a friend call instead. Um, you need to speak to a manager. Do you, if you talked, you're probably talking to a really obnoxious clerk. Go to the, okay, so you say you went to the clerk of the court office for code violations. You got to go to the code enforcement department. That's probably why you're not getting it. Or go to the person in charge of that stuff. That That's kind of what I, I'm thinking. Woken says, what method of lead gen would you go for to get your first deal virtually within a month? Cold calling government lists would probably be the only one I'd be doing. And finding people to drive for dollars for you for free. Just call my water util the water utility department. They said it takes two weeks before we've seen the list. Is that normal? Every county is different. So maybe it's normal for that county. So sure, maybe. Quinn says, where do you submit uh, JV deals? www.flipathrick.com slash JV. Um, that's how you send it. Send it over. Zach, I'm sure you know my friend... Uh, Chris and Richmond is modeled and now is mostly JV with the students, so he doesn't have to market much anymore. Yeah, except I don't. I'm Chris is a good person, I like Chris. Zach, I got a smoking deal. I'm working right now. Appointment is Friday. Did a soft close for 125,000 ARV. Oh, ARV is 205. Property just needs a light rehab. Tax delinquency. <laughs> Corey, let's go. He's Deals keep coming and going and going and going. Let's go. I'm telling you. Once you start getting this stuff going, it gets better and better. Corey, you are awesome. I love that. Milo says, what are your thoughts on wholesaling storage unit facilities for bigger spread deals? They're out there. They're just a t like insanely tougher. So <sighs> go do it. Um, it's, it's not the best sometimes though. All I need is uh, my first deal. Oh yeah. You got this. I never understood how you can keep getting rich off wholesaling. Don't you eventually run out of list to pull? Uh, no, because motivation comes on like it just keeps going. Uh, people's lives change. Every month there's a new deal, uh, honestly. Never stops, trust me, because there's new motivations, new code violations, new probates. If people are being born, I'm telling you right, if people are being born, there's wholesaling deals. Let's see here. Alrighty. Got him. Awesome. Healing sounds. I'm looking at a house that says that it's $50,000 equity left on the property. If purchased at asking price, what does that mean exactly? As there's 50 K left on property. If they're purchased at asking price. Oh, it's 50 K. If you purchase at the asking price, that means if they're asking a hundred K for it and there's 50 K in equity, that means if there's 90K in equity, if there's 90K purchase price, then you had $40,000 in equity. Fell asleep, I'm back. Awesome. Woken asks, does the title company have to be in the state you do deals in or can I have one title company for all deals? I prefer you have a title company for every state and market you're in. That's just honestly what I've seen. It's had the best results. All righty. Oops. Tyler says this for this information is amazing, man. Thank you for taking your time out, especially for a new holster like myself. Of course, Tyler, anytime. Donald, what is up, Donald? I know this might sound like much news, but I've been putting up bandit signs for two weeks in San Jose. I haven't gotten a phone until today, and it was a cash buy in the area. 
Hey, you got it. I'm going to Disneyland. I love it. I'd love to see that. That's awesome. Um, Ed, what is up, Ed? So, interesting question here. You know, um, any tips on showing proof of funds when working with real estate agents and other sellers? So, I'll be honest with you, like with a real estate agent, they're going to like, they, they'll cut your BS really quick. Um, so, using a proof of funds of like your buyer is going to be like, tough. Uh, I, I wouldn't even like recommend that. That's you're probably going to be destined for disaster. If you do that, I, I'm, I'm just being honest. Um, so I would say use proof of funds. If you have it, if you don't, whatever, use a hard money lender. If you want, um, most people get away with just a hard money lender or like a private money. Um, that's where the, the best results are right now. Some reason it doesn't feel like it's live today. Raise the energy. What? I'm live. What are you talking about? Oh my goodness. Cash flow and appreciation. All righty. Tips on how to handle objections and build rapport. Uh, my best tips, honestly, on like how to actually build rapport. Like, honestly, what I've seen is <sighs> Ford method is probably the best one. Family, occupation, recreation, dreams, Ford. Uh, the next one here is eye contact, smiling, caring about the seller, and actually just talking. Um, in my opinion, just asking questions. That's really where rapport is. Um, that's what I'd say. Sorry, Zach. I should have further clarified what formula for malt. Surely it's not typical. No, no. It's, it's off of what of the cap rate is going to be with the multifamily, mostly off of cash flow. That's where a lot of these are. The mad money says, Hey Zach, love your content. What's the, what's a good finder's fee to negotiate when sending deals over to real estate agents? I mean, it could be 50 K could be 20 K. It really doesn't matter. Ready? Friend says, thank you, Zach. I mean, I mean, can you show on the phone or Google phone? I, I I can just do a Google voice, um, tutorial if you need it on YouTube, um, dialer bash will literally do, like, they'll do a zoom with you, not a zoom, but like they'll call you and like do support chats. Um, Hey Zach, what is your thoughts on investor lift? Uh, it's a no for me dog. I'm not an investor lift person. Uh, so no. Can you please talk about liens and judgments on a property that is up for grabs? So if there is a share of sale or like a sale on like a tax deed sale, um, I probably, probably not. Like I'm just telling you right now, um, for, if it has a lien or judgment on it, it's still a really good wholesaling deal and something I'd be going after. But if it's like on like a, judgment sale or it's like going to be auctioned off, I probably would avoid it. So that's sort of where I'm seeing It's up. The value uh, you give is insane. I really appreciate what you do, man. I appreciate it, Justin. Thank you. Uh, what do you think about real estate agent distress list from off market leads? Are you talking about expired listings? Uh, kind of make that a little more specific. Get a booyah. Uh, Zach, if you run into homeowners who want to stay living in their homes, looking to JV. All right. Sounds good. Uh, messing it with Emily says I'm in Tampa. I can come to Port St. Lucie, take out the coffee. I appreciate that. Emily really, I'm going to say this in the nicest way. You, I get asked to go to lunch all the time. And my only answer to that, if I say, if I think it's in a bad way, or if it's in bad taste, um, I always say is like, do you think I cannot afford lunch on my own? I think I make enough money where I don't have to. So uh, I appreciate everyone asking, oh, can I take out the lunch? I know the game. I, I don't think a free meal is going to entice me to go talk to you for two hours when I could have, uh, when I could just grab regular food and go somewhere. Um, but you know, I mean, I'm not like a big 
uh, you know, take me out to take me to a lunch or something. That's not going to entice me. Sorry. But uh, I talk to you live one on ones on Thursdays, though. You and your dad are great people, man. I hope to get, I hope to meet you someday. And it's a new month. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. Woo! What's the incentive for people you hire if you want them to drive for free? So I, if these aren't people are going to hire. These are going to be JVing people you're going to joint venture with. The incentive is if they're too scared to actually talk to sellers, what they need to do is go give you a list of, J, of drawing for dollars leads and you'll talk and close the deal for them and you'll give them a percentage of the deal. That's pretty big for a lot of people. Hey, Zach, what is up, Sherry? Just herniated my back running my junk removal company. Oh, shoot. Jump into wholesaling land right now. You got this. Where can I get fire damage properties from your local firehouse or fire department? Adam says, I'm setting up a VA to categorize the no responses with my SMS text blasting through batch leads. How do I set this up if they're in Philippines with the time difference? Um, a lot of them, a lot of the VAs are going to be working uh, the night shift kind of. Maybe they got families. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, depends what time zone you're in. But like 7 p.m. I think 7 a.m. there. Um, I think it's like a 12 hour difference. I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's set up where they have to work those hours. They usually work them. Make sure there's no roosters or anything in the back uh, if they're calling, but I really shouldn't be that big. Jonathan says, do you ever run into deals uh, where homeowners want to stay living in their homes and how do you get them to sell um, we do creative financing and keep them there. Yeah, I do. And when they want to do like, so if, if they want to stay living in their house and they, and they, and you can't get them to sell, if someone wants to stay in their house and they don't want to sell their house, then I don't buy their house or try to wholesale or do creative financing. I, Jonathan, please specify what you're saying there. Like how that's a JVing opportunity. If someone wants to stay in their house, and he, I, I don't think it's a good JV opportunity. If somebody doesn't want to leave their house or sell it, I, I don't want to be with them. Okay. Thank you for everything you do, man. I appreciate that. Anybody in Northeast Georgia, Eric, that's a great market. I'm telling you, that's a great market. John says, you're rocking. The reason I'm doing this because I'm doing now is because you, what you were posting a year ago. Awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate that. Sherry says, I have 20 acres of water from land asking 260K. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, acres water from land. Is it land on the water? Uh, please specify that. Um, it'll be easier for me. Uh, any hard money lenders you can refer for transactional funding? Mm, probably not right now. I might work with somebody though. Let's see what we can do. Mustache Mike says, do title companies provide sale and purchase agreement for free? Just curious. Some do, some don't. Uh, a lot of them are different. Uh, so that's what I've seen. Tyler, boom, what is up? Bro, you have a millionaire mindset and that's the goal. Love the message be uh, behind the information. Can't wait to watch the entire channel and start as soon as possible. Gave me the confidence I needed. Appreciate you and your time. Appreciate you and the time you're giving us. Time is money. I'm telling you, time is money. And uh, I really appreciate you saying that. That Trust me, in my heart, that, that means a lot. Um, thank you. I, I truly appreciate that. These lives are one-on-ones are enough. Thank you for doing what, uh, what you love and appreciate you for free. Appreciate that. Uh, Zach, aside from the probate lists, do you find the best for direct mail using the rapid offer system? I feel like the cash offer on the card entices a callback effect uh, effectively. Yes, that's what we do. Um, but I, I'm telling you, you probably need to get some deals before you start doing that. Again, that's all in mailingmastery.com. Um, but yeah, if you want, sure, mailing mastery, go out there, use it. But I'm telling you, it's something, it's more of an advanced strategy. But, um, if you want to, it's, you ain't going to get hurt doing it for, if you do it the right way. Um, hey bro, sorry, late. Keep on crushing it. No problem. Always love helping the people out. 
So again, asked here, is Nashville a good market? Nashville is a good market for a band's uh, TV. Just understand though, I, I, I'll tell you right now, Nashville is kind of a little more saturated. Like it's probably one of the most saturated markets in Tennessee. Knoxville, Chattanooga, uh, I think Shelby County, maybe Severville. Corey's kind of by there, Corey. Uh, but uh, Nashville is a good market. I'll tell you right now. Uh, but it's not the best, obviously, out there. Smoke on the water. <laughs> I'm not paying retail anyway, but 620 is a high price for land in Chester, VA. It's waterfront. Uh, let's look it up. Chester, VA. Chester, VA is... Let's kind of see what this is. All righty. Let's look at median sales price. Median home price. And then I'll just do Zillow. So what I've seen here is 310. So 20 acres could be, um, let's take a look here. So if you're just doing the math really quick, um, 620 for 20 acres should be roughly 31K an acre. If it's on the water, but here's the problem, Sherry. Like you say waterfront, you're, you have a different definition of waterfront than me. Because I'm looking here. So you're talking riverfront. So there's a difference between like, I guess if it's on this river, you can technically call it there. But I mean, I'm just saying um, ocean access is it's kind of deep in the river there. It's like saying Knoxville has got water access. Now, if we're talking like, you know, you got waterfront land um, like here. Like we're talking like Hampton, Jamestown, like fine. But like there's difference between waterfronts and they increase in value. Uh, that's kind of like inland. So it's probably not getting like the craziest value there. So just be careful with that. Zach, what is a good source for multifamily apartments? Um, probably listrei.com. Uh, so I'll show you right here. So listrei.com. I'll show you exactly how to do that really quick. Pop it up. Okay. Let this load up. Okay. Um, so uh, someone can comment what market I should look up. Let's do it. So I'm on like ProfStream here. So we're doing Birmingham. Um, so this is like the Birmingham list. So let's do multifamily there, right? All I got really got to do is go here to filter. All right, let's go here to filter. So there's a lot of quick list choices. That you're really not going to see a big multifamily one here. Um, so what you got to do here is go to property characteristics, go to residential, commercial office. You can kind of like put it to where you, Oh, I'm, I'm in the way here, aren't I? So again, it's kind of in the way, but like, which one do you want to do? So if you're gonna do multifamily, it won't be classifications. You could do commercial, but I'm just going to click multifamily. It really depends on what type of multifamily you want. So you're saying apartments. So if we want to do apartments, we do multifamily five. That'll probably pump pump them all up if you want to technically get there. Uh, you got commercial, so appliance stores, casinos, casino. They got some casinos you can hit up. Uh, I don't think anything's popping up. I can get car washes, the go-go car wash, right? Ben breakfast. Like it gets kind of insane. Preschools, hotels, nurseries, um, by cemeteries. Um, you got recreational here, industrial, um, residential. So like where you, like if you want to specifically get into apartments, you kind of have to scroll all the way here 
And then right here, you kind of get into residential and then residential. Cause some people just take commercial. I don't know. So if I want to get a hundred plus unit apartments, I just click that. There's not really going to be many there, but the apartments with five plus units are there too. Um, kind of, we got to get like a bigger city. So let's just do Miami. Miami. So if I want to filter out here and then go to, let's pop it up here. Uh, property characteristics, uh, property type, go to apartments here. Um, quadplex weight right here. Uh, okay. So the apartment unit is not popping up here. So I'd probably just go here to multifamily five plus. And it looks like it's not popping up. So let's clear all. Might be a filter on here. Um, probably just go to commercial here and then go from there. Um, filter out here. So I probably just use two to four there. Like, and I'll pop it up like this one right here. Got duplex condominium, condominiums, multifamily dwelling, stuff like that. Uh, that's probably how I do it. You do probably the same thing on batch too. So that's what I've seen. Okay. Um. So I'm not paying retail anyway, but 620 is a high price for land. Yeah, if it's high price, it ain't gonna work, it ain't gonna work, you know. Um Mo Skrilla says, I uh, like the name. Hey Rick, appreciate everything. This is Zach. Uh question: How do you get accurate skip tracing numbers? I tried batch and I got a lot of numbers. Like, how do you sort them out? Uh use Google Sheets or like uh Microsoft Excel. That's kind of how I do it. Like, I don't think any other ways to like really explain it, but I just do it with the Excel. Filter by the three phone numbers. Get rid of all the info you don't really need. Keep a copy of it, obviously. And then filter it in a way where it's skip traceable, but you already have it skip trace. So either depends on the format. So if you do SMS, um, if you use like smsact.com, they kind of have a format they want you to do it in um, where it's got to be friendly for there. Usually a CSV. So when you go to like file and then you go export it, there's going to be like a certain file for that to be doing. So just know that, for example. Uh, what's up? How are you? What is up? I've been using all over media and expo media for door hangers to get leads. Interesting. Hanover PA. Hey Zach, have you wholesaled any red tag houses from County records? No red tag are kind of like when the County deems the property unsafe or hazardous. Uh, I don't really wholesale many of those. Um, I have in the past, but like not recently. Is Alaska a good market? depends where in Alaska. Like if it's got a population, yes. If it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, probably not. It, it, it's kind of dependent. Sherry says, Zach, I tried to follow your podio training, but I got lost. You were pretty going pretty fast for the slower folks like myself. Sherry, I have three podio trainings. So you got to be specific. I did one where I went live for two plus hours doing it. Um, search podio space flip with Rick. It'll pop up. Do the two hour one that was released like a month or two ago. That'll help you out. You can also make these uh, slower. California in the house. Who wants to team up uh, going after it? Love it. Are those zombie property emojis? <laughs> oh, I love it. That looks cool. Uh, thank you, of course, David. John says, if you're not able to get a homeowner, okay. Uh, investing with Emily says, is there anything about batch leads you like more than prop stream, even with sold being taken away? Because sold still show up under comparables tab. I totally prefer prop stream. Interested in your thoughts. So the one thing I, <sighs> prop stream does have a free drawing for dollars app in there. Um, what makes prop, what makes batch leads sometimes better is it's like, I think 
it's a little bit cheaper if you have the lit, if you have like the batch leads, if you're already using it for like smsact.com, sure. Um, what honestly I could tell you is it's really up to your preference. Um, you can get s- cheaper skip tracing, but I kind of use like both of them. That's where I've seen. I think for most people starting out, props you might have a slight edge, but it really depends on which one you want because batch might have the slight edge depending on what you want. If you're using all the features, what, what I would say is I would pull them both, use the free trials for both of them, and then go figure it out. Um, depend, I, I'm going to call it market specific. That's what I'm, I, I think they're both pretty equal. I think PropStream having a free uh, drawing for dollars app gives it edge for a lot of people. Then batch the MLS sometimes gives an edge for other people. Uh, Sherry, you're watching an old podio tutorial then. I have a lead. Go to the most recent one. Uh, relaxing sounds says I have a lead, but I want to make sure I offer the correct amount. How do you figure that out? Go to freewholesaling.com and show you how to offer it. It is ARV minus repairs multiplied by a round, depending on your market, maybe 75, 80, 83%. But yeah, that, that's kind of what I've seen. But uh depends on what market you're in. Thank you. Zombie houses. Awesome. Hey, Zach, of course is awesome. It's the course I have been looking for years from Seattle. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are you in or have buyers in Kentucky? Thoughts on the market? Kentucky is ripe. You know, Louisville is really good. Um, Lexington, anything kind of near Ohio is really good too. Right? It's by Cincinnati, right? Kentucky, let me check. I think it is though. Let me just check. Um, yeah, like the north, like kind of like by Cincinnati. Yeah. Yes, thank you for your time and all the free info you share. Of course, no problem. Uh, AK abandoned, neglected, damaged, eyesore, ugly, so the house on the street. So that's interesting, the red tape ones, but um, yeah. Oh, no, you didn't ask that question. So cool. G Flores says, yo, how are you, Zach? You and your dad are killing it and making a huge difference. Pin the gurus to shame. They're trying to copy. They need to quit and just hut up. Say it like it is. I 100% agree with you there. Facebook user says, finding great properties that can easily be wholesaled, but the numbers are dead after skip tracing. Uh, so they easily be wholesaled, but the numbers are dead after skip tracing. I'm doing it virtually, so I can't go put a sticky note on the door. Any advice? Facebook message the people. I'm telling you right now, that's going to change a lot. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'd say right now. Um, so uh, give them a Facebook message. I'm telling you right now. Head estimate repairs. Uh, PropStream has like a blue hammer tool. You're really going to look at the condition and then reverse engineer from there. That's what I'd say, Nathan. Um, estimate repairs. You can roughly do it by square footage and see. You got to figure out what the cost of things are and then see what problems the house have. Uh, freewholesaling.com uh, kind of explains that. So uh, I'll, I'll say it again. I'll say it a million times at freewholesaling.com. That's how you're going to figure it out. Uh, what would you recommend for more lead active leans? For more leads, I'd say vacants if you want more leads, if you do more marketing, but active leans might be a little better. What are your thoughts on New Jersey? New Jersey is a good market. Um, a lot of it's saturated. It really depends if you can get lower ARVs. Depends. So like if you're by like Trenton versus like, I don't know, Western New Jersey, it's going to be different. Hey man, how do I contact you for JV? www.flipwithrick.com slash contract. I'll put it in here. With Rick. Thoughts on DFW, great drawing for dollars market. And then last question is, what are your thoughts on Daytona? My daughter's about to go to college there. By the way, you rock, big fan. Um, Daytona's okay, okay, Mark. If you drive for dollars, you should be there. Um, That's what I'd say. Uh, That's what I'd say. Um, I really appreciate you. I purchased a mastery course from a guru and took me nowhere. You're the real deal. Follow and subscribe. Thank you so much. Guys, what I can tell you is, Build the wealth of your dreams in wholesaling real estate. If you do the one thing 
and that is focus consistently on your marketing and getting your knowledge up on this business, you'll do well. I'm telling you guys, this is the business that changed my life forever and you can do the same thing. I really appreciate it, guys. Consider liking this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's get it going. Here's the, uh, let's pop up the video for freewholesaling.com. Go there, freewholesaling.com. Thanks guys, see you soon. Hey guys, Zach in here from Flip with Rick. And after helping tens of thousands of people get started in wholesaling real estate and helping so many people out go from $0 to $100,000 in wholesaling real estate, I'm super excited to announce my new wholesaling mastery course. This wholesaling mastery course will have everything step-by-step -step on the whole entire wholesaling processes. I'm gonna give you real deal examples. I'm gonna hold your hand throughout the whole wholesaling process. This course will give you everything you need to know to make up to 100,000 to over a million dollars per year in wholesaling real estate profits. Most real estate gurus out there will charge you around $5,000 for a course like this. But today, if you click on the link, you will get my wholesaling mastery course for the low price of sell out. What? What are you, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? What do you mean? I knew you would do this. I knew you were going to go the course route with the guru. It goes against everything we've preached from day one. Don't be a sellout. The course is free. What? I'm, the course is free. I'm giving it for free. Oh, I apologize. Carry on. Jeez. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, duh. Do you think I'm going to go sell out as like a regular guru selling you a course? I'm not trying to make money off of you guys. Guys, over here, all you got to do is click there to just sign up. No gimmicks, nothing. Absolutely for free. It's a free wholesaling course. Literally, I've seen every single wholesaling course. I have access to all the 10,000 mentorships. Guys, I've literally copied them step by step. I literally have an entire course set out just for you for wholesaling real estate. Click on that and let's